So today we are going to talk about uh, similar triangles, specifically just triangles, and the way that we can prove triangles similar. Just like we prove triangles congruent, there are ways and shortcuts to prove them similar. So here are the three different ways to prove triangles similar. The first way is angle-angle, or sometimes you guys will call it angle-angle-angle, which is fine with me, but it's technically just angle-angle similarity. This is one way that proves triangles similar, but does not prove them congruent. All you need to have is two angles marked congruent, and then we know that these two triangles are going to be similar. So they can either be marked or they might give you an actual degree, and obviously if they're the same degree, then they're congruent. So that's the first way. The next two ways deal with sides, and if we remember back from what we just talked about um, with similar figures, sides are now proportional. Okay, so we have SSS similarity, which is just like congruence except for the proportions. Now, they're not going to be, obviously, if you take a look at this triangle and this triangle, they are not the same size. They're similar because their sides are proportional. The easiest way we tell you guys to match the sides is always the smallest to the smallest, or I guess shortest to shortest if you want to be technical, should equal the middle length, okay, to the middle length. And then finally, it should be the longest to the longest. Because sometimes you'll have triangles that are overlapping, like we've seen, or twisted around and turned. So if you just take the numbers from one triangle to the next and match them up like that and then simplify, they should still have the same scale factor. If they don't have the same scale factor, then they're not similar. The second, or I'm sorry, the third and final one is side angle side, which is just like the congruence. Except for now, once again, our sides are proportional, but the angle that's included or in between the two proportional sides are congruent. So you still have that congruence, A, angle A being congruent to angle D, but now the sides are proportional. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples using these three ways to prove triangles similar. Right, so first we've got four triangles up here. We want to figure out of the three choices, A, B, and C, which one is similar or which ones are similar to triangle EFG. Well, the first thing I want to do is figure out what is this missing angle, angle G. So we know this all adds up to 180, and I end up with 30 degrees here. So I'm going to go through A, B, and C and figure out well, what's missing in those. Well, this is 30 and 90. Oh, I don't even need to figure out what's missing. This 30 degrees matches angle G, the 90 degrees matches this 90, so A works because of angle, angle. If I look at B, I've got 60 and 90. Well, we had a 60 degree over here, and we had a 90 degree in EFG, so again, we have angle, angle. So both A and B work. So let's look at C, okay? And C has 35, which doesn't match anything in the first triangle. It does have the 90, but if I were to do the math over here, I would get 55 degrees, and that also doesn't match. So C does not work. There are two triangles similar, answer choice A and answer choice B. If you guys want to try this one on your own, figure out which ones are similar to triangle EFG, then we'll compare answers in just a second. All right, if you guys did this right, you should have gotten A and B. Okay, great. All right, moving right along. This, this is still determining if the triangles are congruent. I'm sorry, congruent. I'm so used to congruent. Similar, not similar, or cannot be determined. Sometimes there's just not enough information. So for number one, you're looking at angles. So let's go ahead and figure out if they only give you two angles in a triangle, figure out the third one. So when you add up 92, 57, subtract from 180, you should get the third angle, angle C, to be 31. Well, we have 92, 92, but if you take a look, 57, 31 does not match with 41. So actually, number one is not similar. Okay, so go ahead and try number two on your own. See if you can figure it out. Um, solve for angle C or angle D. Doesn't matter since they gave you the other two. And hopefully, if you did your math right, you get angle C to be 55. So you have 48, 48, 55, 55. So yes, and it says 
Do we need to determine why? No, but I'll go ahead. It's angle-angle similarity. All right, number three, if we figure out uh, angle C, adding them up, subtracting, you get 43. So we have one angle matching D and C, but we know nothing about E and F. So if you think about it, it could be any combination of numbers or angles that would add up to give you 137. Okay, so really at this point, we're just not sure. It could be 70 and 67 or it couldn't be. So this is a case where it's not enough info. Okay, and the last set, number four, let's take a look at these triangles. First off, we have two triangles here that hopefully you can determine by now, they are isosceles triangles. Because we have base angles marked congruent here, and we have the legs marked congruent here. So if we know that the base angles are congruent and we have already a 90 degree angle, we can do 180 minus 90. Okay, to give us 90, and since they're congruent, divide by 2, and we know these base angles are 45 and 45. Okay, over here we already have our 90 degree angle, but once again, since it's isosceles, I can mark my base angles congruent. So we can still do the 180 minus 90, gives you 90, and divide it by 2. So if you take a look, it's a 45, 45, 90. So both of these are similar. So this is a yes. And actually, any 90 degree isosceles triangle, a right isosceles triangle will always be similar because those base angles will always be 45 degrees. Now you could also look at this way in terms of, we did it by angle angle, but you could do it by side angle side as well. We're gonna erase a little bit here. Because these angles are congruent to each other. We know that the sides opposite them are congruent. And I'm going to put two tick marks because we're not comparing it to this triangle over here just yet. So now I have that the sides are proportional, two tick marks to one, two tick marks to one, and the included angle is also congruent. So we already agreed that they were similar. Your two options are by angle, angle similarity or side angle side similarity. Great. All right, so now we got to decide, are these two triangles that we're looking at similar? So pretty much the same question, but we got to go one step further. If they are similar, we have to find the scale factor. So I like circling, so I'm going to circle my smallest side in triangle ABC, and then over here on my triangle DEF, I notice that 6 is the smallest length over there. So those go together. I'm going to set that up as a ratio 9 to 6. Okay. My middle side in triangle ABC has a length of 12. Triangle DEF, my middle side has a length of 8, so I'm going to set up that as 12 over 8. And then my longest side is the 15 compared to the 10. So now I want to see if these are all, in fact, equal. Well, 9 over 6 are both divisible by 3, simplifying that down to 3 over 2. 12 and 8, I can divide out the 4, simplifying it down to 3 over 2. And 15 and 10, I can divide out the 5, simplifying it down to 3 over 2. Since these are all equal, these are similar triangles, so I'm going to say, yes, they are similar by side, 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 similarity. And my scale factor is 3 over 2. Okay, so looking at these, we've got some overlapping triangles and intersecting triangles, and we've got to be able to determine where exactly should we be looking. Is there any other information that we know before they tell us anything? So looking first at our, what I like to call the bow tie, we can always mark vertical angles. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that real quick, making sure not to make them congruent to the other angles B and D. So again, the task is, are they similar? Are they not similar? Or is there not enough information to determine that they're um, similar? So looking at this one, I now have enough information to say that they are similar because we have two angles congruent to two angles. So this is by angle, angle similarity. In the next one, the two triangles we're looking at are this triangle RLT compared to triangle OMN, okay? And notice the parallel markings. Anytime we have pictures like this with the parallel markings, I can mark my corresponding angles congruent. Now, I'm gonna put two tick marks here since we already know that R is congruent to M. 
So again, by angle, angle, I have enough information to say these are, in fact, similar. By angle, angle, similarity. All right, what about the next one? We've got parallel lines, but they're not set up like the one we just did, so we don't have corresponding, or corresponding angles in that sense. But if I count TR as my transversal, and this is parallel to this guy, I do have corresponding angles over here. And I could do the same thing on the other side. If I make UR my transversal, then I have corresponding angles over here. Okay. Now, we also have the third thing, the reflexive angle, the shared angle, angle R. I have way more than enough information to prove that these two triangles are similar by, again, angle, angle similarity. All right, so this is an SOL style question. I'd like you guys to pause it and see if you can determine which of the two, which two out of the three are similar, so circle them. And then it also wants you to find the scale factor. So this would be one of those ones where you would select and click the two correct choices. All right, so hopefully you selected the second and third choice. They are similar by side, side, side similarity because you can set up the proportions four over two should equal six over three should equal seven over 3.5 and they all do simplify to two to one. Okay, so they are similar by SSS similarity and then our scale factor is two to one. All right, so now we've got missing parts. We're going to tell you that these two triangles in each picture are, in fact, similar. Using that, we're going to prove, or not prove, we're going to find what's missing. I want to find the length of BC, so that's right here. Well, let's look at this picture and figure out what should correspond. I don't have the luxury of saying, okay, I've got the smallest side that I'm going to match to the smallest side, biggest to biggest, because I'm missing a measure. In this type of picture, when these are marked parallel, we're going to go across the diagonal. So 5 and x are going to go together. Just like, and I, since I started down here at this triangle, I'm going to pick 7 to go on top with 4. All right, and we've been practicing solving proportions. So we've got 5 times 4 is 20 equals 7x. And we're going to end up with x equals 20 over 7. And you can leave it like that, or you can give us the decimal answer as well. So go ahead and take a look at the second one. It's very similar, except for we don't have the parallel sides. But if we recognize this side is going to match with this side, since we don't have the long transversals in the middle. So we can start off with 10 over 25 should equal, and since I started once again in this triangle, I'm going to use 15 on the top over x on the bottom. Okay, so when you cross multiply, you get 10x equals, give me one second, 375, 375, and then we're going to divide out by 10, so you get x to equal 37.5. Back up, I think I messed up, 25 times 15 is, oh, I'm ready, okay, good job, all right. Last problem, let's go ahead and take a look at this. There are two triangles here that are actually connected and overlap. I'm just going to outline the two different triangles, the little blue one and then the red one. And the question says, use similar triangles to find the length of the fallen tree. So really, it's that length of the hypotenuse in the red tree. Well, what I'm going to do is separate my two triangles to organize my information. Where I have 10 listed here at 8 in the small triangle. And then my red triangle that we just outlined and put X on, we have the whole length is 28. So now that we separated and take it, we took it away from the diagram, hopefully it's a little bit easier now to match up the correct parts. So we should have 10 over X should equal 8 over 28. Okay? So when we cross multiply, you get 8x equals 280. And then divide by 8, and we get the length of that fallen tree to be? 35 feet. 35 feet. Okay? 
So we are done today, but here is a challenge question for you guys to answer and bring to class tomorrow.